Ben. I'm Ben. And this is Daniel. It's time for another bad podcast. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> Can't wonder if this will catch it. That just sounds so nice, don't it? I like how you did the little, like, Coca-Cola sigh. Like the... <sighs> yeah. You're having trouble there. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Oh, I lost half of the match went somewhere. I think you just burnt it like all down. Can we now direct attention to our first bit of uh what's it called? Fan art? I mean that's what it is, but artwork? Decor. Decor. All of those are what it is, I think. It yeah. is fan art. Um Jason, thank you for yeah. uh <laughs> Actually watching. <laughs> I know. Thank you so much, Jason. That's awesome. We appreciate it. Uh, Jason made this, and he also um, left a quote. There's an I inscription had. on the back, yeah, yeah with a timestamp and everything. It's really nice. Anytime mm-hmm. I get um, mail that I'm not expecting, I always assume it's a bomb. Right away. Oh, really? Yeah. Like when Table said, "Hey, there's this big box on the porch." I said, "Don't open it." <laughs> it's like two seconds away from calling the police. Yeah. <clears throat> Did they call him the Unibomber, the guy who did that? He would mail packages and... Well, there him. has been several. There was one just like a year ago or something mm-hmm. like that in Texas. Yeah. Talking about the Oklahoma City bombings? No, I think so, yeah, yeah. Or Kansas City bombings? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, I think that was a Unibomber. Yeah. <clears throat> Anyways, there's not truly a beer of the week this week. Not a new one. Not a new one. It's back to Modelo. It ain't broke. This is just um, apple cider. With a little bit of vinegar. Does it really? No. Oh, I would throw up. I apple hate, cider vinegar. I hate apple cider vinegar. I put that in my ramen tonight. Really? Yeah. Was it good? I forgot my phone. This episode could be brought to you by Diamond. Uh, we use We only use Diamond to light our candle on set. We only use what? Diamond. Diamond brand matches. Oh. Is there another brand though? No, exactly. There's only... When you think of matches, you think of these little diamond brand... That's a motto. When you think of matches, think of diamond. Yeah. When you think of matches, think of diamond. Get at us. Hey, guys. Number uno. I was... I forgot. And I'm so glad I write down my shit. The actor that was calling Seabass got him wrong. It wasn't that guy, Turk. Okay. His name's Sinbad. Oh, That's his name. Really? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know where I got Seabass, but it wasn't the guy who I got him confused for. Okay. Wow. I know, he, right? <laughs> was he the actor in, in the show we were talking about? Or? I don't remember. Oh, okay. <laughs> but I do know that that is definitely his name. Right. Sorry if you hear my dogs eating, but it's too cold for them to be outside. Yeah. Because of, like, laws or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm yeah, just joking. Something like that. Yeah. Uh, oh, I've got a story to tell you. Okay. I finally set up a, an appointment for my vision. Really? So I'm going to get new glasses. Yeah. He's, like, five years old, six years old. I don't know. Dude. They're not the same color they once were. Buy direct, like, online, if you can get your frames. I would rather test them on my face. Yeah, I guess. Do what you want, dude. I don't know. <laughs> Oh, I, it, don't they have a thing to like superimpose them on your face? They do, um, <laughs> like online, yeah. But it's it's gonna be much better if you go like into the place and try them on though. So that's what we're doing. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I've already got my little card thingy, so. But my story is about trying to set up an appointment. Go for it. So I went through this whole rigmarole to see what uh, my insurance covered, mm-hmm. and it covers a. Uh, diagnostic visit basically and Kilgore was one of the places that it showed accepted it my entrance so I call them to set up an appointment first of all they never answered the first time they went to the voicemail so yeah. I left a voicemail I thought this is weird a receptionist at the office can't answer the phone yeah don't they have like multiple lines isn't that like the only job of a receptionist <laughs> I guess so and I feel like they've got multiple receptionists there I don't know it's been a long time since I've been there yeah uh, second thing, when they called me back, they're like, when are you available? I'm like, well, are you open on the weekends? And they said, no. And I said, oh, okay, well, I work seven to four. 
can you set me up sometime after four? I can be before five. Just anytime after four, it's when I get off. And like, no, we book our last appointments at four. Really? <laughs> Forget about me for a second. What about all the people in the world who work a regular job? Yeah. Are you telling me that they're going to have to take off work so that they can go to the eye doctor? They can't ever... I think a lot of people do that, like, but it's very inconvenient. Yeah. It's very inconvenient, and for somebody who wants to make money, why would you do that? Right. So you know who's getting my money instead? Who? I guess they're getting my insurance's money. <laughs> Heffley. Yeah. The, the eye doctor at Walmart. I told they said, "When are you available?" And I said, "I will, like work seven to four. And they said, "Oh, come by anytime after four. That's fine." Nice. Like, Damn. Maybe there I'm just go. gonna have to pay you out of pocket. Just there you go, dude. <laughs> No, uh, yeah, that made me really mad to think. It's it's like a lot of places do that though. Yeah, we talked about barber shops. Yeah, like, they'll yeah. be open during the week, but they're they close at the time that people normally well, they get want off a work. weekend too. I mean, I, I it's get fine it, with them I'll, having a weekend, but why not have different hours or something? Yeah, it's it's definitely a struggle with the way like things are set up because people work in those hours, you know, and it's very inconvenient to have to take off like a morning of work or a full day or just whatever. You well, know? like. Jasmine's does it perfect. Yeah. They close into the times that people wouldn't really normally be. I don't work for, I don't work at Jasmine's, but yeah, they do it pretty good. <laughs> okay. Although people do get upset because it's like. Now it is time to scrutinize, devise, oh, scrutinize, devise, hypothesize, and then lastly, theorize. Okay. Let's talk about 9-11. First, you want to try a Swedish fish? Oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was just recently Halloween. We got some candies here for those that aren't watching. Oh, by the way, I called in Friday because I was sick. Yeah, yeah I, I've been feeling sick. And I, I just laid there with my eyes closed and I listened to the rest of our podcast. Really? Nice. I am now opening Swedish fish. Never had one. They're, I like them. They're one of my favorite gummy candies. You need to eat like three at a time to get the. <clears throat> it's a fat-free food. Yeah, it is. Um, you're not gonna like what I have to say. You don't like them. This tastes like the last part of a sour patch kid. Yeah, I. I, I like the texture, sour. I like the sour too. But the texture is much different than a sour patch kid. It's drier or something. Yeah. Yeah. Almost like I can feel the sugar. I like it, yeah. It's like... It's, Are you at one? No. I just get her song. I mean, the taste is there. They're the snack that smiles back. <laughs> For a limited time before you bite their heads off. Yeah. And devour their souls. I like them. Yeah. I, right. I always thought it would be something really off the wall. You ever heard of Good and Plenty? I hate those. Well, you never. That is the most pleasure. evil thing. Like sometimes, yeah. First of all, they market themselves as if they're not licorice. Right, I know. <laughs> it's licorice completely... is like a nasty candy coating. Like, <laughs> they look like little pills. Yeah. I don't know. I just the best part about them is the disgusting candy coating. Like that's why I used to like them as a as a kid. But and when I say like, I mean I would eat them if there was nothing else available. Okay, so now I got a Whoppers. Mm. You like you? Have you ever had a Whopper? Oh wow! I can't even open it. Jeez. Have you squeak? Yeah. There we go. So, did we copy this from the UK, or did they copy us? I think we copied them. Uh, Maltesers were the original, and now they're here mm. in America. I love that, honestly. It's like you're eating a big ball of clay, and then turns into sand mm -hmm. good tasting sand <laughs> wait you said you have one you want one yeah yeah he's hungry mm. a little crunch right it's got a good chocolate taste too mm -hmm. the chocolate is pretty good I think if they were much more airy than I was thinking they were going to be then I would like them mmm I like how it just melts, man. Do you know what was delicious? Mm. The M and M's that had like a crunchy thing in them, like a crunchy little. It wasn't a malt thing, but it was. It reminds me of this a little bit. 
It's just... I think oh, I know what you're talking they're about. They're so good. They have like a crunchy shell. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't remember. No, I think it was that. They're a blue package. On to the so next candy. Good. Yep. Kit Kat. Snack that smells back. Give Kit me Kat. a break. Give me a break. Give me a break of that Chrysler car. <laughs> I'm assuming you want half? <clears throat> He wants half. Yeah, hell yeah. Now I love. You know how I love to eat these. How? <laughs> what? I'm sorry. What? <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen that before in my life. <laughs> no, even more. <laughs> He's going further. You can peel apart the layers. Why would you want to? <laughs> you know, look at those layers, man. Look, chocolatey wafer. Yeah. Yeah, no, those I, I can see because they're bigger. What's a nutty bar? Uh, nutty buddy. What's a nutty buddy? You, you've had, you've had them in this house. You've given us some. Oh. <laughs> what up? What do you call them? I don't know. I know what you're talking about now. Yeah. But I've always called them something else. What is it? No, that's what they're called. Yeah. But I don't remember what I called them. I really want to know like what it like, could have been. I remember I remember realizing oh, I've been calling these the wrong thing. Mhm. And I've never remembered the right <laughs> name. And uh, I like, yeah, I like Nutty Buddies. Yeah, yeah, they're good. No, the creme de la creme. Yeah, Reese's, Reese's is one of my favorite candies. Reese's cups. Mm -hmm. Now, this one's fucked. They all kind of are. <laughs> you know what I used to love to do? Mm -hmm. Refrigerate them. Yeah, that's good. Oh, my God. Very good. Virus and threat protection. <laughs> we good. All right. Mm. Now, magnifique. Only the real will know what I'm talking about. But do you guys know about? Uh, it's like miniature nutty bars, um, but it's Reese's. They're Reese's sticks. I love those so much. Do you know about them? Comes in a pack of four, usually like a king size. No. They're so good. I'm, I'm on a kick of dark chocolate. I'm like, dark chocolate Reese's? Mm. I can't really understand. I'm going to tell you one of my favorite snacks. Okay. Mountain Dew white chocolate Reese's. Really? Mm. That's just a good combination. <laughs> I feel like... And what a pick-me-up. Yeah. Dude, the, they're not here now, but those Hershey's uh, cookies and cream bars, those are one of my favorites as well. Where did they go? I ate one of them, and I think you ate the other. I didn't eat the other. He did. <laughs> They're so good, dude. <clears throat> I'm sick of all this disrespect. Anyway, you can teach us about 9-11 now. I was <laughs> after the candy break. You didn't like what I came up with? Which one? Scrutinize, divide, hypothesize, and lastly theorize. You came up with that? Yeah, I like it. I just didn't... I, I wasn't going to comment on it. I didn't know if it was... Comment a, on it. I like it. I like how they all are like... I was sitting playing the hunter today and I'm like... Hmm. I like how he told me to comment on it and then he like cut me off during my comment. We all have already discussed how what I have to say is more important. Yeah, true. <laughs> um, no, a lot of people believe 9-11. I'm not going to say fake. It definitely happened. It, yes, yeah. an event definitely happened. Yeah. But how the event went down and what actually took place is what people speculate at. Mm -hmm. And um, all I want to do here is to examine what just three dudes <laughs> who work at two different places <laughs> <laughs> can figure out just from using the internet. Okay. One of my least favorite things that people say is, oh, well, it's on the internet. It must be true. In a mocking way, you know? Yeah. I believe everything I read on the internet. Unless, it, unless it's like overwhelmingly like fake. I'm like, yeah, I'm sure that happened. 
<coughs> well, the thing is, is okay. not really, but like, you know. Well, I love that. When people say that to me, though, it's like, okay, then you can't believe anything ever. Yeah. Then what? Because it's all on the internet. Like, yeah. Like, obviously. What about your textbooks? Yeah. <laughs> like, so I understand that being cautious and not believing it just because it's there, but also <laughs> you can't just say, oh, well, it's not true because it's on the internet. Yeah, like, it's like, a, it's a very, it radiates boomer energy. Like yeah. Big boomer energy. Very hard. Yeah. So when I heard that last night, I was like, yeah. Oh. <clears throat> but we love this person dearly. <laughs> um, first of all, this is, I'm not taking a stance as to whether what I really believe happened with 9-11, mm-hmm. but I'm going to say a lot of things I'm going to mention are very coincidental and just seem weird. Okay. How do you feel about it? Um, like I said, an event definitely happened. I just, I can, it's easy to buy into conspiracy theories uh, and then what, because they sound like believe like they're designed to like be believable, but um, I just I guess I don't really have a f- like a firm belief. Yeah, me either. I'm yeah. open to <clears throat> anything because I at one point it's almost like well, if you don't believe it happened the way it did, then then it could be anything, right? Then what's true? Then what's true? And of course, we already believe we truth. nothing's yeah. true. <laughs> yeah. Um. The so I'm only going to talk about basically one thing, <clears throat> and I don't know a whole lot about it yet. This I want can I, can I be a series, <laughs> like every <laughs> every episode, we maybe devote one. like ten to fifteen minutes just right. on something else that I find out. Right. Number one, do you know the planes that were involved? Like a seven thirty seven. Um, I don't. No idea. I don't know about a 737, but their flight airlines flight 11 was a 767. Okay, and that's the airplane I want to talk about. Whoop. Okay, good. Um, let's see. I told you about the Saudis threatened to sue the FBI. Mm-hmm. Uh, it wasn't quite the Saudi government; it was Saudi Airlines. Oh. Because of the 19 hijackers. Uh, six of them were supposed to be Saudi citizens, and like four of them were supposed to be working with the Saudi Airlines. And so the Saudi Airlines was like seeking at how they might possibly be able to sue the FBI mm. for like ruining the reputation of their pilots and something like Because they were pilots. Damn. And get this all 19 hijackers were supposed to have died on the four planes. Yeah. Or whatever. So how are these men still alive? <laughs> like they're alive today? Really? Not all nineteen of them. I haven't looked into all nineteen of them, but yeah, there's like recent articles about them. People that were on the flights are alive. The hijackers, the supposed hijackers. How? I've now, never heard that. Like here, here's here's the thing. What we do know for a fact is that these people who were supposed hijackers are still alive. What we don't know was their identity stolen by actual hijackers or was their identity made up and they were never involved at all what I mean is like this one person who got me led into this whole thing was saying that there was no hijacking whatsoever that these people were the the passengers were killed but they were killed in a remote location in a completely different plane as what hit the Twin Towers so there was no hijacking ever involved so, um, and she cited a lot of different stuff that I was like, oh my God. Mm-hmm. And one of them being <clears throat> that a lot of these people are still alive. <laughs> like after this happened, several of these people like contacted um, their country's embassy and was like, hey, I'm still alive. I wasn't on that plane. I'm not a hijacker. <laughs> and, oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Um, one of them apparently had never even been to the U.S. Mm-hmm. Another one had been in Tunisia for like a year doing different kind of like training for a pilot as a pilot. So like neither of them were able to have ever been in America Mm -hmm. at the time. And then another one had been in Florida and he and his brother were accused of being hijackers. And he's like, my brother's been dead for a year and I'm alive now. (laughs) So we weren't on the planes. So there's some weird stuff. Yeah. 
Also got some things on NASA too. <laughs> really? Um, so it was just odd. <clears throat> now some articles I pulled up today. Let me see if I can find them real quick. I saved them to my saved pages. Mm-hmm. Are you ready for this? Yeah. Let's see. Now this article was updated this year okay. of, in March by the Washington Post. I think it was the Washington Post or it was uh, LA Times. And it was an article just talking about um hold on. <coughs> <coughs> this one particular um supposed hijacker his identity was in fact stolen. Al Mary was one of the named hijackers is a pilot for Saudi Arabian Airlines and was training at a Florida flight school earlier this year. Uh Let's see. It goes on a lot, but it, it just talks about how Saudi Arabia has trouble with people f- stealing identities <clears throat> and forging okay, yeah. documents to get yeah. into the U.S. Oh, so <laughs> we do know that the people that were have said to have been on the plane were not on the plane. Mm-hmm. We don't know. Was who it just was? made up right. or was there actually people who st- stole their identity right but it makes you think too because i have another article that talks about what the faa demands and you're supposed to have you don't have to use a passport in domestic travel mm-hmm. but you have to have two forms of id one being a photo id do you ever have to show a photo id well i i show my id uh um yeah you do to get to tsa yeah now would they not look at your id and look at you they do, and they, they usually, like, I've never had anyone just, like, glance at it. They all will, like, look at me, look at the ID, look at me. So it's like... Now, isn't that what's confusing? That if you have to produce this ID, whether it was stolen ide- identity or not... Well, what were the laws then? Because nine eleven like, changed everything. I it changed know. a lot of things, but it didn't change, like, you they still had to show your ID. Needed. Okay. I mean, it wasn't like they... Yeah. We're doing body cavity searches all the time, but yeah. they did have security, I thought. I, I'm sure they did, but I think it's like, couldn't you like do all kinds of stuff back then? You could do a lot more stuff. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's drastically different, but yeah. I've never flown, so I'm kind of using just what your experience and is. And I could be wrong, but didn't like the TSA come from 9-11? Like, or, or, I mean, I'm sure there was security before, but... I well. Think- this uh-huh. isn't about the TSA. This is just saying the FAA requires okay. required it. Um, the Federal Airline Administration, I think, is what it stands for. <clears throat> now, I don't know when they started doing the two IDs, but I'm, I think it was even back then they were using it. Mm-hmm. So imagine, even if, say, you stole my identity, mm-hmm. if you had my face well we look kind of similar so this isn't <laughs> you're right this isn't a good <laughs> but, i could wear a ball cap and I mean, <laughs> if uh <clears throat> but if you had my okay if brendan, yeah yeah if brendan steals my name yeah he does he just have, have my face. name with his face right or does he have my face and my name right. because otherwise how many other ben kelly's are there in the world that it could have been you know what i mean mm-hmm. it's just like it's a little weird <clears throat> it's just a little off yeah Okay, let's see what the other thing was. I have I have a list. I'm I'm glad you do. I didn't really prepare much this week. I know. I just wanted to talk about uh, Kanye's. We're gonna talk uh, about it. Yeah. This is yeah. only supposed to take 15 minutes. No, that's fine. Yeah. I didn't because I don't know a whole lot, but there's enough things I thought yeah. I'm gonna look into this. Uh, flight termination <laughs> systems, FTS. These are things that, um, and it goes pretty in depth. Like the conspiracy goes wild. Like the guy who designed the system and sold it to Boeing was apparently somehow a part of some other things. Uh, anyways, this is a, the flight termination system allows, and I got this, speaking to the person who mentioned to me last night about you can't believe everything that's on Google. Yeah. I got this from like a .gov uh, site. Yeah. It was um, flight termination systems are used currently for drones that we use flying drones. But what it was is just to take control from the airplane itself so that you could control its descent and land it without it 
a hijacker taking it and destroying yeah. the building. Yeah, or a control basically. It, it was yeah. Now I don't know how how much they can control it, <clears throat> but apparently once that system takes over, there's no no one's able to go back and undo it like a Until pilot like couldn't do. It. Yeah. yeah. Uh, apparently this 637 or 667 was supposed to have had it. So why did they not use it? Mm. Uh, another thing was all of these people were apparently had made phone calls, like their last phone calls to their loved ones and everything. I've heard those. But a lot of people have also stated like past 1,800 feet, you don't have cell phone coverage. So they must have used their phones, the inline phones. And this one flight attendant that I listened to is saying that like an early March of that same year, they had taken all those types of phones out of 630, 667 planes. Mm. So it was like the phones that they were supposed to have used. And there was some different corroborating evidence, like a CNN reporter, a correspondent was supposed to have been one of the people on one of these planes. And her husband said, Oh, she called me from uh she did a call collect. And they were like, uh, that's impossible. And he's like, Oh, well it was a plane phone then. I was like, mm. It was just <clears throat> stories changing. It was really weird. Um, that one I don't. I haven't looked into a lot, so I don't know what uh, what altitude yeah. you lose coverage. Yeah, like I wonder if that's been tested. Or yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, another thing is, there is a complaint by one of the flight attendants that were on the phone calls. Uh, her name was Betty Ong, and she said that. Something about they think mace had been sprayed in like business class or whatever, or first class. Mm-hmm. This atten- flight attendant, a different one who was talking about how she believed it was fake, was saying that in a pressurized cabin, if somebody was in first class and they sprayed a cheap s- perfume, people in the very back and lower class or um, coach would be complaining about it. Yeah. So it was like if they sprayed mace, everyone would have known. Because their eyes would have been burning. Okay. Because in a pressurized cabin, it's like... Has that been tested? Like, is that true? I don't well, know. Well, I know that if you spray mace, if I sprayed <clears throat> mace in at the front door, you'd be feeling it here. Okay. So I can just imagine Yeah. there okay. really wouldn't have been a question about it. Um, There were some other things that I also didn't look into. Apparently, on one of the phone calls, a woman said, the man's at the top of the stairs... And she was speaking about a six, a seven sixty seven, mm-hmm. which doesn't have stairs. Really? Yeah. And this all leads to like this one crazy theory, which I'm starting to <laughs> lean towards. Another thing was, I don't remember the next. Let's see. One of the flight attendants says, "Passenger nine B is the terrorist, basically, really? a hijacker," and. Apparently in protocol for all like, air travelers or whatever, flight attendants and pilots, you're never supposed to say who you think it is in case it's not. Hmm. Like, because she calls back and says, oh, it wasn't 9B. But ha- ma- imagine she had never made that second call. They would have skipped over another possible, hi- the real possible hijacker to go after passenger 9B or whatever. I guess I'm confused. She... She was able to call out twice? Like, she was on the phone for 27 minutes. Really? Apparently, and this flight attendant who was talking says, that's not at all what you're supposed to do when they train for hijackings. Yeah. Apparently, like, you, you're you the only job that they have is to never let anyone into the... The, um, the, Cab- the cabin? Pilot's cabin? The pilot's cabin. Yeah. She said, under no circumstance, <laughs> even if they're killing hostages... They are not at all supposed to open that door because of all the different things that might happen. Mm -hmm. Their only job is to make sure to land the plane safely and not let anyone in there. Mm -hmm. Um, But apparently they did. That's a thing that's like, yeah. Until you, if that were, if that was happening, (coughs) it's a, it's it's a human error type thing. Yeah, her story on that was like, I understand what you're saying. The protocol is, but I understand people. Yeah. Uh, But her saying who it was, and this is the crazy part. When she calls back and says, no, the passenger in 10B just stabbed passenger 9B. Really? Originally, 9B was the supposed yeah. hijacker. And then he's the one that gets killed. And I think he's the first one that gets killed. Just so happens he's like the only one there who is like trained in special forces in the Middle East. Wow. It's really weird. He uh, was in Israel, became like a special forces unit in Israel. He spoke Arabic and Hebrew. 
and he also came to America and became like this. He was a super smart dude. Yeah. And people made a statement about him, like his friends did, that he could kill any human with a pin and a credit card. Wow. But this is the first guy that gets killed. So you're telling me he's listening to these guys speak and he doesn't do anything? I, there's just so many weird things. It's like, that why is, is weird, he yeah. just so happen to be the first one that gets killed? You could look at it as a coincidence. Right. But then you could also look at it as like, they were taking him out. <laughs> yeah. Um, one attendant said the doctor and nurse were helping one of the people who got stabbed. While a different attendant, flight attendant, on a call said there weren't any medical personnel on the plane. Mm. So it was like, there's only one reality on this plane. Is there like, I mean, I'm sure it's confusing, but Mm -hmm. what I would give to just know exactly what happened. Uh, Another thing was that apparently one of the pilots said they thought they were over Ohio. If you're a pilot... And you fly whoever flown to New York, how would you confuse New York, Manhattan, for fields of Ohio? Oh, when they were over New York, he said Ohio? Yeah, this is like a minute before they crashed. Mm. It's just weird stuff. Now, I didn't write this other stuff down, but this is what I'm going to talk tell you. Now, some of the things that I was looking into was about radar and transponders. A transponder on a plane, radar normally already would ping them. Mm-hmm. But it has it doesn't like really tell them the altitude. The transponder, what it does is it assign they assign themselves before each flight. They have a different uh, a four digit code, and that's what they assign themselves. Radar pings out, hits the transponder. Transponder sends back a signal of with that four digit code, and it's like uh, altitude. Mm-hmm. So it's it's the transponder tells uh, traffic controllers like exactly where that plane is. Yeah. Somehow the transponder gets turned off. So if they broke into the cabin, the hijackers could have turned off the transponders. However, after Flight 911 hits like the North Tower, they like all of the military, and there's like a bunch of transcripts, they get that plane confused with a different plane that got lost. But they lost all like they lost it off of radar. Like how'd they lose it off of radar? Mm-hmm. I understand that they might have trouble deciphering exactly where it is, but apparently these fighter jets that they sent up could not find this plane. They got, first of all, they got it, the Flight 11 confused with a different one, like Flight 93 or something like that. So after the plane hits, they think the plane is still up in the air heading towards Washington. And it's like, mm. how did your radar not give you an idea of which direction it was going. Yeah. You don't really know the altitude, but how do you not know the direction? Yeah. Second of all, I don't understand how, if you were seeing the direction, even if it magically went away, how you all of a sudden thought it was going a different direction. Mm-hmm. It was just like weird stuff. But one thing I heard was the same guy who came up with that flight termination system also was in charge of like... uh some other type of software that helped it was able to turn like um make objects not appear on radar yeah it was like if it was covered up and only select people knew about it and they covered up the radar that's why the fighter pilots couldn't find the plane yeah and they got it confused hmm so that's some things I gotta look into but yeah I was just like yeah there's a lot of questions surrounding it and it's always been something that's been like heavily debated you know just like uh kind of like go it's easy to buy into things but if there's things you're saying actually happen like there's video of people saying that like of actual and yeah i mean it's kind of hard not to think something else well as far as the radar and transponders you can find that information yeah the transcripts are released by I think the FBI released them mm-hmm. and I have a saved page that lists like the whole day's trans yeah. correspondence. And let me tell you, when the fighter pilots are talking, I don't know what the hell they're saying. They're like five five zero five trot two one zero, but um, the other parts and it and it's really weird how the conversation goes down. Let me just show you one okay. part. And I've never been in a hysterical situation like that, so I'm not saying that I would have composure. Right. But when you hear one of the things that this woman says, it's just like, I don't understand. Okay, 
the transcript of flight attendant Betty Ong. Let me go and see. This is probably like the last thing I have to talk about. Uh, let's see. It starts off with a male voice. This is, I don't know who this was supposed to be, but they're on the phone call with Betty. He goes, which flight are you on? She says, flight 12. That was incorrect. She's on flight 11. Mm-hmm. She got her own flight wrong. Yeah. She was a flight attendant. But I'm just going to play devil's advocate. Like, you know, it's a stressful situation. But how do you forget? Maybe, I mean, it's 11, 12, you know, and also maybe she it was supposed to be on flight 12 that day and then somebody was sick. She got it put on that one and she's like, Flight 12, I don't know. It's just like a moment. Yeah, I don't look at that yeah. and go, oh, that proves it. I look right. at that and just go. It's one of the many. Yeah, things. if that one was combined the, with yeah. other things. Uh, okay, next. Operator. And what seat are you in, ma'am? Are you there? Betty Ong, yes. The other person says, what seat are you in? Then another voice says, ma'am, what seat are you in? Betty goes, we, we just left Boston. We're up in the air. Female voice says, I know. Because she had already said that yeah. we've been hijacked. And she's like, I know. What? And then Betty goes, we're supposed to go to L.A. and the cockpit's not answering their phone. The, female, uh, the other voice goes, okay, but what seat are you sitting in? What's the number of your seat? And Betty goes, okay, I'm in my jump seat right now. It's like, why was she not saying what seat she's in? Yeah. Now, you can boil this down to maybe she really couldn't hear them, but... That's another thing. Like, is there recording or is it just a transcript? Uh, I th- You can hear the recordings. Um, okay. But I just got the transcript so I could read it. Because, like... I don't know. I, I'm just imagining like it could be loud, and also, and when I sit down on my seat, I know it's different for a flight attendant. But when I sit down on my seat, all knowledge of what seat I'm in is like immediately gone. I'm like, I knew, I know what I needed to know to get here, but. Why do <laughs> but I you're also now? a different person, exactly, man. Yeah, true. I don't know. <clears throat> um. Okay. Let's see. What else is there? Oh, and then she comes on again and says, I'm on flight 11. Mm. So maybe she just misspoke <clears throat> before. Mm. Uh, let's see. And the cockpit is not answering their phone, and there's somebody stabbed in business class, and there's we can't breathe in business class. Somebody's got mace or something. Mm. I don't... I haven't looked into it enough to see where they were all supposed to be located. Yeah. But also, have you heard that, like, this flight, this plane could have held like eight, 180 passengers. There's only like 30 something on there. Yeah, they're huge. And I don't know, it's just weird looking at it. Like I'm trying to compare it to now. Like I've never been on an empty flight, but I'm like, it's like 20 years ago, you know, like it's. I still can't imagine. Yeah. I don't know. Um, Let me see if there's anything else that she said that I was like, that's really weird. Okay, so they a lot of people are involved in this conversation. Like they're all <laughs> on the line with each other. Mm-hmm. Uh, so this one woman named Nydia gets on there and she goes, "This is operations. What flight number are we talking about?" And one of the original guys says, "Flight 12." And another girl says, "Flight 12." Okay, I'm getting. And then Betty goes, "No, we're on flight 11 right now. This is flight 11." And then uh, Betty goes again, Boston to Los Angeles. Let's uh, keep. Okay, and then this, the original male, uh, one of the original people said, well, if they were shrewd, they would keep the door closed. Betty goes, I'm sorry. And then the male says, would they not maintain a sterile cockpit? Like they're supposed to not let anybody in. And then she goes something about, I think the guys are up there. They may have gone there, jammed away up there or something. Nobody can call the cockpit. We can't even get inside. Is anybody still there? It just keeps on going. And she's on the phone for like 20-something minutes. Mm. It's just a lot of things. And now I understand when somebody is in hysteria on the outside, it looks ridiculous. But them, they go, this is completely rational what yeah. I'm doing. So I'm not saying, I mean, she was described as a hero. I'm not, yeah. I'm not saying any of these people did not die. Right. I'm no, not saying, no. I believe they definitely died. Mm-hmm. I believe how they died was different though. And there's a lot of things. There were, when, on the day of 9-11, there were like 12 war games in America that were going on. Really? Yeah. They were actively testing different things. And we're going to go into it a little bit each time. Okay. 
Just what are war games like? What do you mean? Like they were testing scenarios. Oh, okay. <coughs> <coughs> and in fact, when they were going and uh, they were trying to scramble some fighter jets, mm-hmm. they were going, "Is this is this uh is this real oh, life they, or is this a game?" Uh, right, because they uh, thought it was part of the training. Yeah, okay. and they're like, "No, this is real life." And then it was so hard for them to get people to respond. Like when they were trying to get a hold of Washington, two of these guys are talking. They're like, I don't think they're taking us serious. And this one guy's like, yeah, fucking no, they're not. And yeah. It's like, why was Washington not responding? Did they think they were kidding or what? By this time, like one plane had already hit the towers. How did Washington not already know about that? Because, mm-hmm. you know, we saw that as soon as it happened. Yeah. I remember my mom picked me up like <laughs> as soon as she could. And that yeah. happened at eight something in the morning. But people were watching that occur live on television. You're telling me Washington... Wasn't taking something serious. Mm, yeah, it's like I don't know. I don't know how you're feeling right now, but no, I like I'm like it's super easy for me to believe stuff like this. I'm just trying to like just for the sake of this, just trying to be like. Well, let me compile some more information over yeah. the course of the next week. Yeah, for sure. And then I'm gonna do my best to blow your fucking mind. <laughs> They're pretty. Yeah, I mean, you've blown it already. Like, no, not to say that I if I saw any differing evidence for yeah. my opinion that I wouldn't believe it because like one of the other things was that several first responders had said that the plane looked like a military plane and not mm-hmm. a, a commercial plane when I looked at pictures of what the plane was supposed to be it looks just like a six, six yeah. or 767 like yeah. the plane looks like what it was supposed to be yeah unless I'm looking at fake images <laughs> right <laughs> it could go on right um yeah that's actually it's like weird because in 2000 and like you could you could fake things a lot easier because you don't have the level of like scrutiny on the internet that you do now. You're like, oh, that's that's a bad Photoshop. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. and the quality was so much like worse. So it's like a blurry, just like, oh, this is what it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There was another thing that was kind of <laughs> wild. Several of the people calling said something, and this is like one or two minutes before they hit the Twin Towers. Mm-hmm. They would say, "I think we're over Ohio," or "We we just left Boston." But this is only like one or two minutes before they hit the towers. Mm. This one woman, she was like, okay, this type of plane, they need this amount of runway space for them to land safely or whatever like that. And she pinpointed what she thought to be the hangar because she thinks that they had landed and they were making phone calls from their cell phones on the ground. Mm -hmm. That she says that's the only way she can explain it for them to be able to call from their cell phones. Um Although there was another thing that said that they reduced their altitude. Mm-hmm. So if they were to reduce altitude, they might have been able to use their cell phones. Yeah. Uh, but anyways, say they, uh, she was like, okay, we so I found this one runway that had the uh, at least minimum yeah. yardage that they would need for this plane to land and take off. And there just so happened to be a hangar that was big enough for a six or 767. And this same base was uh, like evacuated that same day really? for two days. Wow. And it's just like, so this one woman says she believes that this plane was landed. These people were told that you're part of, like, we're doing a war type thing. We're, oh. we're doing a thing. Here's what we want you to say. So they made these phone calls. When she says, I think there's mace, this one person said, I think that was hydrogen sulfide or hydrogen cyanide. I think they killed them in there. Oh, my God. That's. She's like, I think they pulled him out. And when she says that the guy's at the top of the stairs, she says, I think she, she was talking about a guy being at the top of the hangar because there's no stairs in the 767. Mm-hmm. This is all conjecture until I get more evidence, you know. But mm-hmm. it's like she says. They, what they were saying was scripted and then it turned real or what? What the people on that plane that died, mm-hmm. she's saying never knew. They what was going to happen to them? Right. They were just told, "Hey, we're just going to run a little." And what's thing. the point of calling like loved ones? Like calling oh to make it look like a real event. But look, the whole idea behind faking nine eleven would be mm-hmm. we wanted to enter a war. Mm-hmm. We wanted to go over to the Middle East. She was also saying that during her whole time as a flight attendant, she never heard anyone referred to as of this in this descent. But apparently. Like there was twelve different phone calls where they said, "Yeah, I think the hijackers have Middle Eastern descent." Hmm. Everybody referred to something like that way. Yeah, that's kind of strange. I don't know. It's just a whole bunch of little things that when added up is yeah, like, no, for sure. It's like 
There's just a lot, you know. There's a lot, and I just barely scratched the surface. Mm-hmm. And I'm not, I'm not, I'm not saying that if I were to find something that differed with me, that I would just. Yeah. I want to not think that the government would kill everybody. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I also do believe that there's a lot of money in war. Yeah, for sure. In um. I mean, what are we doing now? We're guarding poppy fields, right? Yeah. I don't know. Pretty strange, that's for sure. I'm going to look more into it. Mm -hmm. But the basic idea is these people, the flight wasn't full Mm -hmm. as so that they could easily keep them in one um, section and they never saw the other section so they never knew that the plane was almost empty. Didn't the plane hit the Pentagon (coughs) and stuff? It hit a wing of the Pentagon. Yeah. What about that? Like what? So, she was also describing, she was like, um, she didn't describe the Pentagon, but she was describing a crater that was shown as a scene of one of the downed airplanes. Mm -hmm. She said, in every crash, you find at least the fuselage or wing or something like that. You you find some records. Mm -hmm. In this crater that was left, she said, there are um, images of it from like 1990. This crater was already there. She said, Mm -hmm. the wreckage... They never found anything intact. It was just a bunch of garbage thrown around and like metal there no pieces. Plane? There was no intact pieces of a plane. It was just found wreckage, like of like bits and pieces of metal. It was like mm. she says that every uh, crash, that's how hard it hit. It like apparently, she says that every crash she's seen though, she's there's always at least something left. Well, now here's something else that I heard today that I was like, you've ever heard of oh, those towers couldn't have fallen like that that was controlled demolition yeah i saw something that purdue uh, university or whatever took them two years but they recreated what they said was as scientific as they could possibly get at recreating the planes hitting mm-hmm. and they were saying true the temperatures of the gasoline did not melt the steel beams but they did weaken the joints yeah and they had vertical bearing weight mm-hmm. so as soon as it just Weakened got a weakened bit. a little bit, yeah. went to one side, boom, that's fine. enough. Yeah. And when you have the weight of one floor, the next floor, and the next yeah. floor, it starts pushing it all down. So I can see that. Mm-hmm. Um, did you know there's supposed to be a bunch of gold in the in the vault of in the basement of the towers? Really? Yeah, like two point something billion do- like things. Like, maybe it was two hundred billion. I didn't know that. Yeah, like gold. Um, like to this day, still. No, they uh, never recovered it. What? That's reported as missing? Like, really? That's yeah, the, fact? The, yeah, the like CIA, a... like, said that that was missing. Really? But just so happens... Dude, we're going to get into some shit. I'm not going to talk <laughs> about it right now because I don't know the full specifics, but yeah. Apparently there was gold stored in the bottom of the World Trade Center that was never recovered. It's kind of weird to put it there in the first place. Well, it was the World Trade Center. Oh. Also, yeah. <laughs> the I think the first tower, the North Tower that went down first, yeah. apparently was the same place where like uh, the Enron investigations, there were several, you remember Enron? No. I think they made bulletproof vests and then falsified, um, misled shareholders or something like that to make people think that they were better than they were. It was better than they were. And I think it was over bulletproof vests. Anyways, it caused like a lot of people to die or something like that. Were people like testing them out? <laughs> Not like testing them out, but <laughs> they like, were used they were in government contracts. Okay, yeah. I think that's what Enron mm-hmm. did. I don't remember. Mm. I don't know if I'm thinking of a different company or not. But anyways, a bunch of companies that were under like heavy scrutiny. Apparently, all the investigations were occurring in these buildings. Ooh. And it's like, dude, it's just so <laughs> many, so many strange things yeah. adding up. And did you hear we- about like? Uh, them taking out huge insurance policies on these buildings right before like the day before i did hear that yeah it's just like yeah it is weird i don't know you could <laughs> you could basically look at anything and make it like you could be yeah hindsight's like, 2020 20. you right. can always look and i love i got you a quote too okay this was what i was trying to tell you the other day and you're like yeah i'm too tired i can't even comprehend that oh yeah you remember that yeah i do uh let's see i've been reading sherlock holmes mm. He says, it is a capital mistake to theorize before one has data. Insensibly, one begins to twist facts to suit theories instead of theories to suit facts. So you have the fact, and you're able to make your theory. Based on it. Well, I'm not really using that quote correctly in this oh, okay. instance. But I'm just saying, you can make whatever ties you want once you know 
what had happened. Yeah. So if you know this guy put out an insurance policy, then you're like, oh, well, this is what he did. Yeah. But it could have been something else. Mm-hmm. <sighs> oh, here's another quote. When I have spun the web, <laughs> they may take the flies, but not before. Damn, what does that mean? Like, he's going, when he he's wants finished? to go catch these guys. Okay. And he's like, do you want me to go get the police? And he's like, no. When I have spun the web, then they may take the flies. Oh, okay. It's like, after he's caught him and got his yeah. justice, then they can take wow. him. Wow. But not before. Pretty I love cool. that so much. Uh, there's also nothing more deceptive than an obvious fact. <laughs> yeah. That, like, uh, Occam's razor, though. It's, like, the most simple answer is usually the answer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Anyways, we're going to come to the simple answer of 9-11. Okay, I'm ready. No, not meantime, today. In the meantime, though, shout out to Jason, though. I, Back I to keep, Jason. I keep looking at that, and it's super cool. Like, Not only is it our first work of art, it is our first decor of the thing. Yeah. Oh, also, I have me a tobacco pipe. Yeah. You know what's crazy? The design is really similar to that big thing. Yeah, yeah. Was this at all inspired by your recent Sherlock, Sherlock Holmes? Holmes? Yes. Yeah. yes, it was. Yeah. <laughs> no, anyways, I'm done with 9-11 for right now. <laughs> You're done with 9-11 just like that? I'm sick of it. Yeah, me too. It was a terrible thing that happened. <laughs> <coughs> yeah, I look forward to more... Um, like to discussing it more, I just I, I it just takes a lot. Of I want to one of these days. I want to watch one of those documentaries or something. I know there's a couple out there, and I've seen like this past September. I saw some videos on Facebook, like uh, that were recordings of the phone calls to loved ones. It was like uh, it was really like heart wrenching. It was like damn, like you get a phone call to your loved one, and you're like you know, you're, and you can just tell they know they're about, they're about to die or they're. I don't know, like, whatever the case is, it was crazy. But I just don't know enough about. Yeah, I don't know enough about any of it, and I, and uh, my dad looked at me crazy, like, why do, you, why do you believe that? And it's like, well, why do you believe it happened the way the government says it happened? Mm-hmm. I mean, if one day after the fact, and they said that, oh, here's the complete list of the nineteen hijackers, right. and all of a sudden, like three days after that, they had to change like six of the names. Mm-hmm. That means they, got, they either got it wrong on accident or they made it up and only six of the names they had to change because it was found out. Mm-hmm. Weird. I don't know. How mu- I mean, it just goes, how much do you trust your government? Yeah. And did the government go, well, oh, we know who did it. We don't know all who did it. But then it's like, it's like, how do you trust... How do you trust anything? What you're reading about it. Like, yeah, if honestly. If the government knows that they did it and it's a cover-up, wouldn't they control what gets distributed and like what gets out? Like, See, I think that would be too difficult because I think people would re- right then realize. Right. Oh, you're Once right, they right. realize that they're being censored. Suppressed, yeah. It's just like the thing with Tulsi Gabbard being censored on YouTube or like Steven Crowder and all these conservatives. Mm-hmm. Once somebody realizes it, they spread the message. And I mean, I don't necessarily believe one person can change the world, but I believe one idea can change the world, and it catches like wildfire. Yeah. Once you just speak one's thoughts, and it resounds with someone else, you can't suppress it unless you kill everybody, you know? Yeah, man. So I think that's why they don't try to stop. I, I think they try to stop, but that's why I think they don't censor, or from what I can tell, censor what you find on the internet. Mm-hmm. Because I think they would, people would go, hey, why are you trying to, if it's fake, why do you care if we say that's what happened? You know what I mean? I do, yeah. Anyways, I got a lot more to look up into. Can that's just one flight, and I haven't even looked at any. I know, yeah, there's a couple others. There's there four. four planes total. Yeah. There's four. Flight 11. Did all planes flight crash? Flight 77, flight 93, and I don't remember the other. What about the one that crashed in the field? I think that was 93. Okay. I think that's the one where the passengers tried to storm the cockpit. Oh, really? There's a famous line from one of the guys that said, let's roll. I think he just stole Sable's keys. <laughs> the cat. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah anyways. I, I, I only have the transcripts from the first 
one, from one plane. Yeah. And I only have the transcripts from the correspondence of the military personnel involved with that one plane. Right. And not the other planes. Gotcha. Yeah. I still have to dissect it. I still got to figure out about all this other theory. Heavy stuff, man. You remember when I was talking about brain games and I was like, you take the guess of all the gumballs in the machine. Yeah. And then you divide it. I think you got to take all of those theories and there's got to be bits in all of them that are true. Someone used that. Um, I can't remember who it was, but you had told me about that thing. Like, use, like, uh, guess the gumballs, half of the gumballs or whatever. Find the, you told me how to do that. Yeah. And then the next day at work, one of my coworkers was like, um, there was a, fa- a contest on Facebook guessing how many somethings were in a bucket. And I was like, are there comments of what other people have guessed? And she was like, yeah. She came She came to within 10, within 10 being of, of what it was just by doing that. But somebody else had been like two closer than her. But it was for like a gift card at a business or something. But it was crazy how it worked. And, and there were only like six comments, so she didn't have a lot to go off of. Well, see, the the, the person who get it right or closer, did she, they comment after her? Right, yeah. They probably did the same thing. Probably, yeah. And it gets you closer every time. Yeah, like the more comments, the Ain't better. that cool, though? Yeah, math. <laughs> <laughs> it leads me to believe, again, the world is weird. You can, you can almost get the right answer just by taking all the guesses of everybody. I my brother says this a lot. He says like math is kind of like magic, like the way it works. I I mean I think it kind of is. Too Dude, I just don't understand it. Does that not make you think things are fake? <laughs> kind of, but it could just be like, this is what we are. Like I don't know. I I get the whole fake thing, but but it's not fake because yeah, I'm not saying something. that we're not feeling real things. Just what the narrative is is maybe different. Like if people. People, you know, games or movies when they're talking about robots having emotions. I'm like, no, if you program something to feel a certain way, whether it was programmed or not, it's still feeling it, you know, Mm -hmm. just because it wasn't like blood and guts doesn't mean it doesn't feel. Yeah. So I'm not saying that we're not feeling real things. I'm just saying our reality is mm, completely different than what real reality is. Yeah. I I think that could be the case. There's definitely things that, like, make me believe that. Well, isn't it just weird as time has gone on? At least it's weird for me that my my belief that life is not what it seems gets stronger. I'm starting to see more of that in like culture. Yeah. Like I just shared a meme today that somebody that came across my timeline is like somebody ate a those uh, desiccant uh, packs. What is it? Um. It's um. They keep things fresh, or whatever. Uh, from getting moisture. It's yeah. Draws moisture yeah. out, and it says, "Don't eat." And he's like, "You can't tell me what to do." And he eats it, and all of a sudden, he wakes up in a chair with electrodes on his brain. He's like, "Congratulations, you've escaped the simulation. Welcome to the real world." <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah, and I've got a, I got somebody, another Facebook friend, who posted something else about being a simulation. So it's like, the more <laughs> I get ingrained in this idea, the more I'm seeing it everywhere. You know? Yeah. I- yeah, it could, and it could very well be the the case. It's just the way you can look at things so many ways. Like I don't know. Again, I truly feel like this is just all <laughs> fabrication. I just can't fully commit to it. I guess, but like, I could see it being that. Dude, I don't think you. I can't put into well, words is- how weird, <laughs> how weird this situation right here feels. When I, that quote from Inception has. Like a splinter in my mind. Mm-hmm. Things don't... A dream doesn't seem weird until you wake up. I'll just think about something and go, isn't electricity just funny? <laughs> like how you can make electricity? You just have a magnet inside of copper? Isn't magnets just really weird? Mm-hmm. These two things just somehow get an attraction That's to each other? That's what I'm saying. Magic is kind of real. Like, you know what I mean? But it's just... We're so used to it, I guess. Yeah, like we I have mean, electricity. We have lights. Like that's crazy. <laughs> I just think electricity itself is fire. Mm-hmm. Just the whole idea of having to stay alive. To stay alive, we have to have sleep. Yeah. We have to eat solids or some kind of food. We gotta. We have to drink a liquid. Yeah. I just. This is gonna sound weird, dude, but. I just truly feel that this is this is a fabrication. 
I've accepted this. This is what I believe, man. Yeah, I again, I can't fully go like all in yet, but and it doesn't damper what I feel. It yeah, just helps me. That's my thing. Maybe it is, but what does that change? Like It doesn't change anything yeah. except for the fact of being just, just because like, that's who I am. I like to, to know. know. Yeah. It doesn't matter to me what it is. I just want to know. Right. I I guess I can see that. I just don't you don't value the reality as much as I do. Like, you're I okay so. with yeah. letting people believe whatever they want. And you're like, as long as it doesn't affect me immediately, yeah. I don't care. Mm-hmm. I'm opposite. Mm-hmm. I'm like, I don't care if it doesn't affect me now or not. Well, I want to I I know. I say I I wouldn't want anyone to have, like, a harmful opinion. Like, I would do my best to correct someone if they had a harmful opinion. But for the most part, I don't care what people think as long as it's not hurting anyone, you know? Yes. Yeah. I understand that. But I can't get behind that. Yeah. Uh, there's some other things too. It's just like when you can explain life and get <clears throat> all of these different calculations down with a number, mm-hmm. and it can be so eerily accurate. I don't know. I mean, just everything that happens is just so odd to me well segueing from that into the kanye album um for those of you who don't know i'm a huge kanye west fan um and we should have like segments you know what i mean on our show we should have a music segment every week and uh, like um i will display the same artists every time really (laughs) yeah who will it be muse oh really i need to listen to that album you guys told me resistance resistance yeah uh, that's another thing that's weird to me that you don't listen to music like regularly. Doesn't isn't that weird to you? Because you're a huge like he doesn't listen to music. Crazy, clown him in the comments, <laughs> judge him. But uh, dude, I I just <laughs> like I kind of like opera. Yeah, no, I don't care what kind of music you like, but how do you not listen to it like, like while you're driving or just like? No, I do. I mean, there's just I don't. Just like books, when certain things speak to me, dude, I'm telling you, listen to this. This is another thing that, segueing back. <laughs> okay. I told you about, um, okay, let me set, let me paint the scene. Okay, we're back at Pandemonium. The demons are talking about what to do to get back at God. Okay. And one of them, I already forgot his name, Mammon. His name's Mammon, I think. Okay. He says... We built all the structures in heaven. We created everything there. Why don't we just do it here in hell? We can make hell our own heaven. We can build it however we want. And it's like, that's true. What if earth is hell? What if that explains why we're still experiencing all these tragedies? It's like, why would God allow it to happen? Well, because it's fucking hell. Yeah. I could definitely see life being hell. Yeah. <laughs> I can get behind that. I mean, does that not kind of explain why you're constantly tortured? I mean, isn't yeah. it weird that everyone has this, like... Well, life is just a series of torture, like, torture and then a period of non-torture and then more torture, you know? Or straight torture. I yeah. mean, yeah, it can be. say the best case scenario, <laughs> you fall in love. Uh-huh. At the end of your life, either you're going to make somebody else incredibly sad because they're in it, or you're going to die. Yeah. Or else you're going to experience their death. Yeah, it's and that's how I have to look forward to is no matter what you ha- you get to experience your loved ones die or they get to experience you die. I'm going to have to live through my parents dying. People just go, "Well, that's just life." I know. Is it just I've always, life? I've always hated that how they're like, "That's just life." I'm like, that's Wait, major. Where did I you, sign up for that? Yeah. <laughs> like, what do you mean that's just life? Did you get a pamphlet does at it, birth? Does it just <laughs> I didn't seem, get it. Does it just seem a little odd that people just go, oh, just it's just shrug, life. Just shrug your shoulders and be like, yeah, that's fine. Like, yeah, we'll what? be dead, but that's just life. I That has always weirded me out. Like, I will, yeah, I've always thought that. It's like crazy. As soon as just, you're born. We just accept the... Well, as soon as you're born, you're destined for a series yeah. of grievances. Yeah. And and those are just the ones that have to happen. And then there's the ones that will happen also along the way. You yeah. know? <laughs> like Does you that get not cat, make it seem like this is it. hell? Yeah, I know. <laughs> but then there's moments to make it feel like heaven too, right? Yeah, but only to bring you back down. Yeah, I guess you're right. Seriously, doesn't the fall hit so how much harder when you're already at the top? It does, yeah. Like, <coughs> and you know what? That's kind of... 
I think that kind of makes it worse that you can have these periods of goodness because you know they're going to end. That's what I'm saying, Maybe dude. we are in hell, dude. I don't know. And I'm not saying, like, this is the burning like a fire. I'm just like, people talk about uh, why would why would God ever allow these terrible things to happen if he's real? And it's like, because maybe you're in hell, bitch. Like, maybe <laughs> this is it. Or maybe some people believe in, like, the rapture and then there's, like, 7,000 years of... Oh, dude, another idea. What if the rapture already happened and we we're experiencing the 7,000 years? I like that. At, and we're already in the 7,000 years. And that's why... I mean, the rapture happened. The precursor race that built the pyramids, boom, wiped out. I don't think the Egyptians built the pyramids. I think they were helped. We have a lot to talk about. I, we do. You know what my favorite things are, though? Like Bible, like Bible-esque conspiracy theories. Yeah. Like, I like those. Cause we should talk about the Dead Sea Scrolls. We should. I don't know what it even is. We'll have to research it. Oh, but. have you heard of the um, the Devil's Bible? No, but... I'm already excited. Like a monk was in his like room and like wrote this whole like satanic scripture. Oh, yeah. Whew. Gross. <laughs> yeah, I the Dead Sea Scrolls. I do then, like uh, stuff like that, I guess because of like my upbringing. Like I was always raised like in the oh, church. Oh, I love like, theological like, stuff, yeah. man. Yeah, man. But I'm not done here. No, go ahead. I get all these things and it's like I gotta say them because I'm gonna it's gonna blow my mind. Where was I? Let okay. me finish off the last one and then I'm gonna go back to my original. <laughs> Say the rapture already happened. The Holy Spirit has left earth. That's why there's so many people who are non-believers, and it's so hard for people to believe now. That's why so many bad things happen. It's like, why? I'm not actually familiar with the 7,000 years. Like, Jesus is supposed to come back, and then there's going to be a period before we get to heaven. Of Some years. denominations believe that there's the rapture, there's good spirits go up, then they create... They create the new Jerusalem. Okay. They rebuild Jerusalem. They're taking the land back over there, bro. Yeah. Didn't Trump just decide that like our new embassy was going to be somewhere else and like the real Jerusalem? Damn. I don't know. I can't comment. On yeah, that. he moved the embassy. Damn. To what he said is <clears throat> Jerusalem now. It's like. What? I didn't hear about that word. Trump that. really is like Satan, <laughs> the Antichrist. Wow. Because. <laughs> Have you seen like an uptick of like all the people going like bless him? And... Oh yes, that's freaking cr always creeped me out. How they're like, I hope he's not a godly man. Like I've seen comments that are like, I hope you pray for your president tonight when you're tucking your kids. Like to tell them to pray for the like that is weird. Like what? dude, what if he truly is the antichrist? I don't know. I could people see are that. acting like he's the messiah. I could see him being the antichrist. Yeah, I could get behind that. Now I have not heard him say anything that made him sound like he. Is trying to make people believe he is, but there's a lot of people who are like, yeah. I've seen him do some things that are just inhuman. Not any worse than Kanye, though. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, worse than like he just does inhuman things. Like, I've seen, I saw a video. <laughs> the White House, I guess they do this thing on Halloween. All the local kids line up and they go and you give them candy if you're the president. There's this kid dressed as a minion, and Trump and Melania are standing there. And he take Trump has a candy bar and he puts it on the minion's head and he's like got his arms he's trying to reach up and get it and Trump just pats the candy bar on his head and he like sends him on <laughs> and the kid is like wobbling trying to get his candy bar and then it just falls off the no bed. <laughs> yes and he just keeps patting his head and the comments are like why didn't he put it in his bag <laughs> so I was I could see him being like a alien like I don't know like he's not human I, I don't know he's weird he does weird things. <laughs> <clears throat> well, dude, listen. He's definitely, if he is human, he's definitely on a lot of drugs, like uh, like Adderall, stuff like that. Something for ED? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I guess. All kind of things. But. No, look, dude. I've just hit somewhere in my brain about the whole... Uh, about that whole thing. The, <laughs> like the New Jerusalem yeah. and all that. Uh, no, he said he's moving the embassy, but he was claiming because like he's like, no, this is the rightful Jerusalem. Okay. It's like, it's not almost like claiming if it switched, isn't he almost like claiming, no, this is the right spot. Yeah. And can. then all these people are like, yeah, he's praise, praise be to I him. Know, there is kind of like a mindless like feeling to his, to a lot of his followers. It's just like, if you, if you ever read the comments, it's like just propaganda. It's like. Yes, yeah, I'm going to state this man's face on my face, and 
this man, if this man dies, I die. Like, this is my commander in chief. Like, they go all out. I'm going to state right now, yeah, I voted for him. <clears throat> yeah. I never once thought he was a good Christian. Right. I don't think he's like this Messiah. I don't think he loves me. I don't think anything like that. So all these people that are like, yeah, praise him. He's doing God's yeah. work. It's like, is he? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know he was doing God's work. Mm-hmm. Wasn't he just fucking a Stormy Daniels or something like that? <laughs> like, who cares who he's doing? But it's not very Christian of him. Right. Um, and the other thing is... Uh, yeah, that actually is a very good point. Like, pe- Christians who... Who use him as like an example of a Christian? It's like, no it's wonder like, people don't believe. Yeah, that's a huge like thing. I also want to, someday, not today, not tonight, not in this minute. We need to talk about religious versus godly. Okay. I hear Sable I'm in there snoring. Um, but back Bax to my original thing. Oh, maybe we should go. So you know how apparently the Where earth. Are we at, <laughs> Oh, so we'll, we are in this. Are scene. we going to do that? I think we should. Are you down? Oh, yeah, we can just keep it going. He can cut it. And we just. Oh, that's ingenious. 